Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Following breaking news this Friday from Pontiac, the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office says the defendant, Ethan Crumbly, is going to plead guilty to all of the charges against him in the Oxford High School shooting. That guilty plea expected to come at a hearing on Monday morning in Pontiac. The news comes 325 days after the shooting rocked the Oxford community. Sean Lay is live in Oxford tonight getting reaction to the news. We're going to get to him in just a couple of minutes. Let's begin, though, with Karen Drew live in Pontiac with what uh, your sources and other experts are telling you about this uh, decision. Karen. This is a huge, huge development, and a major development this afternoon. We are live outside of the Oakland County Jail. Behind me, Ethan Crumbly sits in a jail cell, the accused school shooter. His parents also in a jail cell. This is major because this is a landmark case. If you take a look at all the charges that he has been charged with, one of them is terrorism. No school shooter has ever been charged with terrorism, and that's why all eyes all around the country are going to be looking at how this is handled. So this is the very latest. Ethan Crumbly, as you said, Devin, he is due in court Monday morning at 8.30. We are hearing from the Assistant Prosecuting Chief David Williams. He has confirmed that he has been told Crumbly will plead guilty to 24 charges. Those include numerous felony charges, murder, and that terrorism charge. That is a major deal. That has never been charged. No one has ever pled guilty to that charge. And obviously he is being charged as an adult. The victims were notified this afternoon. We've been talking with parents in Oxford. Um, th there's a little bit of a gasp. They said, oh my goodness, I can't believe this is happening as we approach that year anniversary. They're obviously looking for closure and so are law enforcement officials. We did catch up with Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard, this is what he had to say about today's breaking news. It's obviously a relief to the victims and the community at large is the most important thing mm -hmm. for me and for all of us because, you know, this is heavy, heavy, and, and we'll never change the outcome and it will always be with them, but at least not to have to go through the pain of painstakingly seeing every bit of evidence and every bit of video and all of the things that would be horrific um, again, to be as part of the process. And, you know, that's what a lot of the parents are telling me. I've been talking, I've been texting all this afternoon with so many Oxford parents, and they said, you know, we want we want some sort of closure. We don't want to go through this trial. Obviously, there's a legal question of how would this affect the parents' trial as well. We have a legal expert joining us at 6 o'clock to take a closer look at that. But major developments here in Pontiac. Um, Obviously, parents are talking about this, so we're going to send our coverage over to Oxford High. Sean Lay has been talking to people so close to the situation, obviously uh, breathing a little bit of sigh of relief. But again, this is just an expected plea. We don't know exactly what's going to happen Monday morning, Sean. That's a good way of putting it, Karen. Good evening from Oxford. We're speaking to people here and word is traveling fast. People are well aware of this coming guilty plea on Monday. We just spoke with a man named Bob Drake. Students here ran to his front yard, waited for their parents to pick them up the day of the shooting. He's reacting to this news this way. I, I think it's, it needs time to get this all over with. You know, I, I think that's a good thing. I, I don't think we need any more publicity. And I just hope, you know, that, that everything works out for everybody. That is the sentiment we're getting from people here in Oxford. Much more instant reaction to this news coming up at 6. Back to you. All right, Sean. And, of course, we will be there for Monday's hearing. We'll bring it to you live on Local 4 Plus. Also, our crews are working to gather new information and more reaction to this uh, breaking news. This afternoon, we will have more coming up on Local 4 News at 6. Now, also here tonight at 5, Oakland County deputies have arrested a man tonight in connection with the deadly shooting of a Lyft driver early this morning in Pontiac. Happened at the intersection of Putnam and Rundell Street around 5 this morning. Rod Maloney, there live tonight at the Oakland County Sheriff's Office with the latest. Rod. Actually, Kimberly, we have moved here to the corner of Putnam and Rundell. And here's the thing. The lift order for a fare came in at about 4, 430 in the morning for somebody to get picked up at the Walmart up in Rochester Hills. They drove the seven miles and got to here, which is just a couple of blocks short of where the original fare had been ordered. 
Sky 4 there shortly after 5 this morning. The call coming into the Oakland County Sheriff's Department as a vehicle accident. When deputies arrived on the scene, they found a much different cause, point-blank range gunfire. Incredibly heinous. Sheriff Bouchard calls this a particularly grisly crime in that the shooter fired from the back seat into the back of the driver's head. She was a middle-aged woman from East Point. Just a really very terrible and tragic situation. This is the area of the crash in the daylight. Pieces of the car remain on the ground, medical gloves strewn about. The sheriff's office tells Local 4 it was just a few blocks away from where the woman driving the lift vehicle put in as a final destination. Sheriff Bouchard says it was not that difficult to come up with a suspect, considering the lift fare remained open and they could follow the computerized credit card information. That was part of it and a number of things. We also had people make descriptions at the scene. We brought out a tracking dog. There were a lot of things that kind of pieced it together. Bouchard says shortly after noontime, they did. And now they're pulling together their evidence to take it to the prosecutor's office. We believe, you know, based on everything so far, that he is our suspect and we have him in custody. This is ring camera video from a house just up the street showing officers rushing to the scene. And it was ring camera video that became important to the investigation. Now, the sheriff's office is not telling us who this driver was just yet. They want to notify family, but we're told that some of the family members wound up over at the, uh, at the medical examiner's office this afternoon, but we're still awaiting the notification on who this victim was. In the meantime, we did reach out to Lyft and so far have not heard back from them on their part of this, and arraignment still is not scheduled. Reporting live in Pontiac, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Rod. Now, breaking news in the disappearance of Zion Foster. Detroit police say they are submitting a warrant for murder in the case. Police spent the last five months searching for Zion's body in a Macomb County landfill. That search, as we've reported, is now over. They did not find the remains of the 17-year-old. Zion's cousin told police she died, and he threw her body in a dumpster. Police say they searched through a total of 3,500 truckloads of trash, we do not know who is at the center of this new murder investigation. Tonight we are getting our first look at the man accused of shooting a 17-year-old dead and leaving her body along I-94 in St. Clair Shores. 20-year-old Nathaniel Taylor has been charged with a count of second-degree murder in the case. Megan Woods is live tonight, and Megan, state police shut the freeway back down today to look for even more evidence. That's right. We spoke to Macomb County Prosecutor Peter Lucido, who says even though Nathaniel Taylor, the 20 year old who is charged, even though he is charged, this investigation is not over. That's why MSP closed off this section of I-94 this morning for hours to take a second look at the scene where they found Taya. This man um, shot this 17 year old child three times in the head, Your Honor. As a judge charges Nathaniel Taylor with second degree murder and felony firearm. We do believe that a $2 million bond, Your Honor, would secure his, um, the safety of the, of the people, Your Honor. MSP stands on the shoulder of East I-94 near 8 Mile, piecing together what happened to Taya Land. In court, a MSP detective explains how cell phone data, GPS records, and video surveillance links Nathaniel Taylor to Taya's murder. It's alleged the two first met on an app, and he picked her up around 3.20 in the morning. Mr. Taylor traveled from his residence in the area of Southfield, across over to Edmore Street in Detroit, uh, pick up Ms. Taylor, travel around for a couple of minutes before getting on eastbound I-94 uh, near 8 Mile. Macomb County Prosecutor's Office says the two got into an alleged argument and Nathaniel pushed Taya out his vehicle and shot her. GPS data shows he stopped on the freeway for about four minutes. The 9 millimeter gun used was found in pieces at Nathaniel's home in Southfield. His brother also has several firearms at his home and also um, helped take part in discarding the additional portions of the gun yard that we are still looking for. The county prosecutor says there could be more charges like accessory after the fact. But again, this is still in the beginning stages. It's still under investigation and they can't move forward until they get that information. He also commended the police, um, the police work that got them to this point. So Nathaniel Taylor will be back in court next week. Live in St. Clair Shores, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Now, forewarn weather with cutting edge technology for the most up to the minute forecast in Southeast Michigan.
Well, the views right now are stunning. Look at these. This is live pictures from Skybridge, Michigan in Boyne Falls. And we're going to be checking out these beautiful shots over these uh, next 90 minutes of news. Our Paula Tutman is also going to take us across the bridge live in just a little bit. This is beautiful. It is gorgeous it's, up it's north a, right now yeah. and pretty nice here in Metro Detroit today, too, especially yeah. compared to where we've been the rest this, of this week. This is true. Just beautiful <laughs> shots, though, from Drone 4. Let's get over to Brian Sherman and a look at what's shaping up to be a great weekend. Hi, Brian. Hi there, Kimberly and Devin. You know, I only come into town when the weather is good at least from what we've had already earlier this week. Lots of sunshine, warmer temperatures. Tower cam from Windsor looking across the river. Plenty of sunshine, blue skies. We made it to 70 degrees today here in Detroit. We're sitting at 70 right now. 69 in Howell, 66 right now in Pontiac, and also 70 degrees working into Adrian. Compared to where we were this time yesterday, we're running 15 to 25 or almost 30 degrees warmer today, and it looks like that warm weather is going to hang around into the weekend as well. Plenty of sunshine, a little bit of high cloud cloud cover, but we'll talk about how long this warm weather is going to last and our next chance of rain that's on the way. Your full forewarned forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, Brian, thank you. Testimony concluded today in the jury trial of three men charged in Governor Whitmer's kidnapping plot. Closing arguments and jury deliberation will begin Monday and will likely last the entire day. Joseph Morrison, Pete Musico, and Paul Ballar are all accused of aiding a plot to kidnap the governor. The three men are among several from Michigan affiliated with the Wolverine Watchmen, which is a group accused of plotting various acts of violence across the state.